now, it's time for the Tubby Smith Show, presented by the Mid-South Chevy Dealers, the official truck of the Memphis Tigers. The show is also supported by Regional One Health, Jack Pirtle's Chicken, AutoZone, Pizza Hut, and by MLGW. Welcome in, everybody. It was a good week for the Tigers this week. It's always good when you win two, when you beat one of your new rivals, and you do that at home, and then you go on the road. Always a fun place to go to New Orleans, but you get a conference win on the road. That's always a, I guess, the climax of a good week. Well, it is. You know, anytime. I don't care who the opponent is or, or what kind of year, because we tell our players, oh, you want to concern yourself with our play and how well we're performing, and are we getting better? And I think we got better um, during the course of these last couple of games. And I know for you, it's always a good thing you have something that you can teach on and harp on to make this team better <laughs> in the whole. Yeah. The first game, the win against UConn, and I don't think I've ever yeah. seen this before, to, to, to lose the rebound margin by 21 and still win the game going away. Yeah. And then you had so many turnovers. The same team, four turnovers against UConn, 21 against the Green Wave. Well, you had to bring it up, but it's a, uh, <laughs> it's a, you know, it's, it's disturbing. Uh, it was disturbing that we got beat by what, 19 on the boards by SMU and lost, and we get beat by 21 on the boards, and we went and win. But, but you know, UConn was coming back. We had, you know, we were slipping. It was slipping away. They made a run at the end. And those areas we really have to concern ourselves with, just like yes, just like the other day, uh, you know, down in playing Tulane, we've got a rebound the ball better we did a better job against them they but they didn't have the size that that SMU or UConn had so we were we were supposed to win the board battle but again I'm glad we did it's an area we really have concern and then taking care of the basketball something we've done extremely well all year long as you mentioned coming off of just four turnovers now we have 21 at, um, at Tulane, it really was uh, that's, that's disappointing. But those are things we can focus in on in practice. Sometimes when you're way up on a team, too, and you know you got their number, you might lose a little focus. Well, I don't know if that was the case. I thought we tried to do a little too much. You know, by that, everybody wants to get it on the act. You know, the guys, you have to be careful. As you mentioned, you know, they're seeing that Tulane, we're, we're supposed to beat Tulane. You know, they're not having a good year. And yes, guys are starting to dribble. We got dribble happy and tried to do too much, and that's, that's, that was a problem. The TPG, obviously a teaching point for the rest of the year. Coming up, you're going to watch a couple of games. Uh, we will uh, start with the win yesterday, and then we'll show you the UConn game. I always like beating UConn, that's for sure. Mid-South Chevy Dealers Inside Access is Markel Crawford, who was Player of the Week in the American this week. He talks about how Tubby changed his shot two games on the AutoZone road ahead, including Mr. Smith going back home to Tulsa. We start with New Orleans from yesterday. That comes your way next on the Tubby Smith Show. You're watching the Tubby Smith Show, presented by the Mid-South Chevy Dealers. Tubby Smith Show, presented by the Mid-South Chevy Dealers. Welcome back in. A trip to New Orleans is always good for the fans. We had a lot of folks there. I know, Coach, you were happy about that. It almost yeah. felt like our gym for a little bit. Uh, and you go way back. You, uh, you used to compete when you were with South Carolina in the old yeah. Metro days. Ned Fowler was calling the plays then. Well, oh, that's going back. <clears throat> that's when I was assistant coach at the University of South Carolina with George Feldman. And, and the arena, Certainly they've changed it. They've improved a lot. It's one of the oldest arenas still being used in major college basketball. Ninth oldest. Yeah, I played, I coached in another one that was pretty old, too, VM's Arena in, in Minneapolis, uh, the University of Minnesota. So, but you see we're starting off. We're getting it going there. Diedrich makes a nice move to the basket. There's almost a charge. You know, we, we always talk about jump stopping, playing off two feet. And they did a good job of, you know, of, re, of coming back and going hard again. A nice pass there. Thought we got a little bump there, but, but Jamario was able to keep his focus. And that's when for young players finishing around the basket. Because early on in that game, we were not finishing around the basket. I think Mark Allen missed the layup, or someone else missed the basket. But again, we again we're having a breakdown now defensively. We had I think we had Keon Clergeau in the game at this time. But again, you see Jamario really has been he's been a real consistent player, especially rebounding the basketball, an area we've really struggled in. And that's why we've had 
we haven't rebounded the ball well because he hasn't been in the game lots mm -hmm. of times because of foul trouble. He's had at least four fouls in every game, I think, until yesterday, and he really did. He played on, on both sides. You had Christian Cassie finally make a bucket. Right. I know you substituted early, and then they went on an 11-0 run here and got back in the game. Well, they made a couple threes there. I think they made about three or four threes on this stretch. But, um, but again, we needed to get guys rest. You know, we need to get Diedrich some time. I think that was the key to our win against UConn. We got rest early for our starters, like KJ and and, he, and even you know, in our backcourt, you know, even though Markel was playing great and having good, he still needed some rest. I think that gives him some more energy at the end of the game. You see him taking the ball to the basket. I know he, that's what you love. Well, he's really attacking well. He needs to get on the boards more. One of the problems we have is that Markel has a tendency to to be going the other way when he should be going to the boards. So we're, we're leaking out a little bit. No, I wouldn't call it. You know, it's you know he's he's pretty fast. So once that ball is recovered or retrieved, no, he's he's out and, and he's out on the runway running. <laughs> nice move inside. That's Big hard to stop right there. Well, it's a tough shot. You know, it's not a you know a lot of NBA players. I know he's been working on that shot a lot. I'd much rather see a guy going towards the basket. Now you can probably get some of your missed shots. By getting the offensive rebounds, that probably helped his rebounding as well. But he's doing a good job. You know, there's, there's, there's a lot of things going on. We're putting a lot of points on the board, and that guy out there can flat out score. Thank goodness we have DJ Lawson because he can. He knows he's he's so graceful in the way he scores and his ability to score in multiple ways. Markell in this game, five threes. That's a career high. It was five of six in that department. Best he's ever been. Well, you know, he, when we took over, one of the things we talked about was his 13% three-point shooting from last year and how we were going to improve that. And he's a coachable young man. He, he took that at heart, a great inside move there off of one of our plays, and he was able to find a soft spot and post it up and make that spin move and use his left hand. So the young players try to learn to use both hands. Again, a good penetration move. That I don't know, I think it was... That someone penetrated over Jeremiah, pitched the ball to him. Great back cut from the high post. They doubled down on KJ, and, and Demario really moves well without the ball. And this young man, he's just instant excitement. He has got a stroke to him. He does. He's, you know, Keon is, is playing better. Uh, you know, he came off of, uh, after coming back from the holidays, he had a nice, a great shot there over two. The clock was running down. We don't necessarily teach one guy shooting over two people, but he's able to make that shot. And uh, there's Alex Moffat. Was that Jake? That's Alex. Uh, that Alex, was, uh, Alex Moffat. It was a nice pass there by, by Ben uh, to, to Alex, and we love to see those guys get in the game. That was terrific. I love to see when he got in. And so and you shared the ball again very nicely, too. I know you turned it over, but there was a good percentage of assists to Buckets made. Well, you know, that's one of the things that concerned us. That when, we're, when we're sharing the basketball, we're much better. For instance, against UConn, we had 18 assists and only four turnovers. In this game, I think we had like 14 assists and 21 turnovers. So those 21 turnovers really negated a lot of, well, neg a lot of opportunities. I mean, we could have put a lot more points yeah. on the board if we just secured the ball and take care of the ball better. You mentioned UConn. They were in town. That is a bit of a rivalry. Last time the Tigers met up with the Huskies was the championship in Orlando for the American Athletic Conference. They won that one, but there's a little revenge coming your way. Stick around. You're watching The Tubby Smith Show, presented by the Mid-South Chevy Dealers. You're watching The Tubby Smith Show, presented by the Mid-South Chevy Dealers. Welcome back in. Thanks for joining us tonight. So the Huskies come in, and they have been a bit of a rival here the last few years as we get more and more set in the American Athletic Conference. And here's a team that's not playing quite as well as normal, but they still have Amita Brima. They still have Rodney Purvis. They still have Jalen Adams, who's been their best scorer. And you guys came to play in this one. Well, you know, obviously, uh, returning players had that taste in their mouth of losing in the championship game last year. In the so, right away, I, I could tell our guys were focused and they were ready to play. We came out, you know, with the right attitude. Uh, and we needed that because they're a very talented team, even without two or three of their top players, UConn. So, we just needed to 
continue to attack the basket. You see Rodney Purvis, a guy like Rodney, who can really do some things. Uh, Andrew was a kid that was coming off of uh, a concussion protocol, so he's a very talented player as well. But KJ and, and Diedrich, you know, Jeremiah, Markel once again was, was filling up, so we had a very, a very good showing that night. Jamario Rivers also had a very nice night in this game. He had a career high 16 points, and uh, afterwards he told me his back is starting to feel better. The, the, the difference in this game that I know you, you would have liked to see a little bit better was the rebound. Well, it, it, um, it was poor. We were very poor in rebound, but they are so long. You know, yeah. They come off the bench with 6'11". They start six, what, seven feet, 6'11", 6'8". And that's, that's much taller than our front line or anyone else come off the bench. And they come off the bench with 6'10", and 6'11". But we did some good things. A nice curl there by, by Markell. And you're right about Jamario. You know, he's... When he's in the game, he's pretty, he's pretty effective. You know, he's just he's not very effective when he's sitting over by me. So <laughs> we need to keep him healthy and keep him in the game and keep him out of foul trouble. The best thing in this game is that we took care of the basketball, and that's why we we're able to. We, even, we only turned the ball over four times, and I think two of them happened at the end of the game. Yeah, well, and the, the, the fourth one was yeah. kind of funny. Anyways, yeah. just dribbling yeah, to it was, end it was, the ball game. Yeah, it was uh, it was interesting. So we could have. Well, we should have only had two turnovers in that game. So we, we bounced back and did the right things uh, with 18 assists and only four turnovers. Here's your pizza delivery hut uh, play of the game. And it's from Diedrich, who had a lot of assists in this game. And Markel, and boy, those two deliver. Well, this is a great combination. They're starting to play well together. You know, when KJ's not scoring, when you get that type of balance scoring in our lineup, and that's what we're getting, you know, one day. As long as we can, if we can just stay healthy, which knock on wood, we've yeah. been so far, um, you know. But but Markel again is, is picking it up uh, at the offense again. You know, we've got Jeremiah who's very uh, aggressive and pushing the ball up the court. And again, we talk about Jamario and how he's been stepping up. If he's again, we can keep him back healthy and keep him playing the way he's playing, it's gonna be fine. We got a got a score there from Craig. Um, I think Craig had two buckets in this game, two or three in this game, so it was good to see him get back on the score. He, he seems to be coming out of his slump, uh, and if uh, you get yep. Chad Rykook back, you're going to be even deeper with the way Rivers is playing for you now, and I, I suspect you're going to get Claire Joe more and more involved as we go along here. Well, I, we need to get you know, Keon involved more. We need to have, we need to get Craig you know, playing better. We you know, struggle shooting the ball. The last outing, but he's very capable. Again, great deflection. Uh, Jamar, you know, uh, Jeremiah, because Jeremiah is, is excellent. Great ball. He, he's keeping. He's our focal point defensively. But uh, I love the way he's playing. I love that shot. If that becomes more consistent. There's another weapon. And look at the fight right there on cue. Jamario. Excellent. Excellent. You know, he, again. He's from right here in the area. By that I mean he went to school at Southwest Community College, which is uh, had some excellent coaching. I've been impressed with his IQ. You know, understand, especially from the defensive, and now he's picking up from the offense. You know, he knows we have, you know, Diedrich Lawson, we have some weapons in Markel, but when you have that type of balance scoring, it is important. You mentioned Jeremiah. That was the only bucket he had in the game. They've gotten a little bit closer. And he yeah. hits that three. It gives everybody a little bit of relief. And there it is. It's all over. And you guys uh, knock off a UConn team. That always scares me. Well, we had a good crowd. I want to thank our fans. It was a whiteout crowd there. And so it was good to promotional things that, that will get people at FedEx Forum. Because it's a great venue and a great place to for fans to watch a game is a great place for us to play. In the 12 and 4 and now 2 and 1 in league play, so far so good, that's for sure. Inside Access comes your way uh, in just a minute and he was just named the player of the week. We'll take a look at how he's become so much better. You're watching the Tubby Smith show presented by the Mid-South Chevy dealers. The Tubby Smith Show, presented by the Mid-South Chevy Dealers. A year ago, Markel Crawford had three threes total. Yesterday, he had five. A year ago, he shot 13% from three-point range. Yesterday, he was five of six. How did he get so much better? 
just trying to do the same thing with the same mindset, coming out, staying aggressive, and uh, keeping my confidence up. I just think last year, uh, confidence was sort of at an all-time low for me, so I just think me just thinking I'm the player I know I can be, just going out there playing the best of my ability every night. I think I definitely figured out my niche, you know, in the game. For uh, just, uh, just, just been a tough couple years for me, and uh, I just think for me, just staying consistent, staying humble, and uh, just for, for my coach staff, just just keep listening. And I just think that's the biggest thing for me, listening and, and improving. <laughs> coach Tubby just was just shoot one day. He came in and just told me uh, just a just a little thing. I was just shooting and looking at the ball. So he just told me when I shoot, just focus on the rim. I think that's helped my shot a whole lot. I just think uh, I'm just shooting more confidence. I'm just, just letting it fly, not holding the ball too long. So whenever I touch it, I just think it's going in. I just think uh, from last year, you know, I'm me playing at the best of my ability. And this year, me finally finding my, uh, my niche to the game, I just think it's big for the uh, university, uh, seeing you know, I was supposed to be the player everybody expected me to be. And I uh, kind of had some down years. And I think this year, just for me to be the best player on the floor each time, the same mindset, and uh, just going out there, being a leader, and just bringing energy each and every night, just looking to get a win. And Coach, you like to say a guy's got to be coachable. He's been that for you. Well, in leadership, I was glad to hear because he's a vocal leader. He's an inspirational leader out there. He comes with, when he comes with energy, we're usually a very energized team. You know, just the little small things you could talk about with, with players that they have to change, and he's a willing but you have to be willing to do that. And that's one thing that I've found about Markel. You get to go back home to Tulsa. I'm looking forward to that trip. That's part of the AutoZone Road Ahead. It's next. You're watching The Tubby Smith Show, presented by the Mid-South Chevy Dealers. Tubby Smith Show, presented by the Mid-South Chevy Dealers. It is time for the AutoZone Road Ahead. Part of it is nostalgic because, Tubby, it was 26 years ago, if I do my math right, <laughs> that you first moved to Tulsa. What do you remember most? Well, just the, the people. You know, whenever you move to it's not about buildings and all the other things. It's about the relationships that you build with people. And so um, we still have friends there. Dr. Malman, who's still on the staff there wow. as a team doctor. I'll see him. I'll see other people there. You know, we we went back a few couple of years ago, and they honored that that old four team. I mean, that that '94 team that went to the Sweet 16. And Alvin Poo Williamson was actually my first recruit. Right. And he's on my staff. Shea Seals is on the staff. Played for me at Tulsa. He's on the staff as assistant coach at Tulsa. So you're right. It'll be a great time. It'll to be back. it'll be a homecoming. They're seven and seven by the way in the year. And then South Florida will be in. The FEDA X Forum, that is Saturday, and uh, they are struggling. They just changed coaches. Murray Bartow, our old friend, will be in the house as the interim coach, and they're 6-8. and eight. And, Coach, they haven't won a conference game yet. They're 0-3. Well, it's sad to see, you know, the change made with Orlando and Antigua, but he's a, I'm sure he'll rebound and recover. I've talked to him just to keep his spirits up. But... You know, we got to bounce back, and I know Murray Barto is an excellent coach. Can't wait. We'll see you at FedEx Forum on Saturday. Thank you for watching the Tubby Smith Show, presented by the Mid South Chevy Dealers, the official truck of the Memphis Tigers. The show is also supported by Regional One Health, Jack Pirtle's Chicken, AutoZone, Pizza Hut, and by MLGW.